Many people's livelihoods and productivity are now completely dependent on the remote computer stations. So I'm gonna share what I believe is an efficient remote station hardware setup that will work for most people and also share some of the issues that many people will run into along with resolutions to those issues. In the past, I managed an IT department which was responsible for determining what hardware our workers got. When COVID hit, we needed to scramble to find ways to keep everyone working when we were forced to close the office. Now we'd always had remote workers, but the primary question was what equipment does everyone need at home so they can be as efficient at home as they were in the office? Let's start off with a quick overview of what I believe an efficient workstation looks like. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the docking station. So this docking station right here is a single point where everything plugs into. So we aren't plugging everything into the laptop itself. And the reason for that is because the laptop just doesn't have enough ports to do what we want. You can see that we have a couple of USB-C ports, an HDMI port and a USB-A port. But then if we come to the other side, we only have one USB-A port, which really isn't enough for all the equipment that we need to plug in. So we got this little thing that does in fact have all the ports that we need, and we'll go deeper into what all of those ports are a little bit later. And it also gets power. So now you can see here, there's one cable going to the laptop. And now coming back a little bit to the laptop, even though everything is plugging into the docking station, the laptop is the brains of the operation. So this is still controlling everything. This is still controlling the mice. This is still controlling the monitors and the webcam and so on. So now we'll make our way up to the second most important part of this setup, <clears throat> which is the dual monitors. So most people want at least two monitors and also they like it if their monitors are pretty large in size. Um, I typically don't like anything less than 23 inches. These are 24 inch monitors. And then we also have the third monitor of course, which is the laptop itself. And we can move seamlessly between all three monitors, uh, which is relatively easy to do um, with, with, with Windows. And now we're gonna come down. Of course, we have a keyboard and a mouse, uh, but then also these are my earbuds, uh, which I can connect via Bluetooth. And there are tons of different solutions out there that do this exact same thing. Uh, but the reasoning is essentially that this is going to give me much, much better sound quality than if I were to use the built-in microphone in the laptop. And then next up, we also have an external webcam so we can get better camera quality or better video quality, um, but also, it allows us to move the camera around. And then we also have this stand-up desk. So I'm not gonna show this to you right now, um, but the desktop setup is important and this allows uh, the worker to stand up if they really need to instead of for sitting for eight hours a day, which is pretty unhealthy. And now last but not least, we have a power strip. And of course, this is just so that we can get everything plugged in to one place, including the lamp that you've been seeing. Now, there is one other optional thing, and that is an ethernet cable. And basically, if you do a lot of calls, especially if you work a call center job, if you are ever getting blips and you're getting poor call quality, then what you might need to do is have an ethernet cable connect to all of this. Uh, ethernet will almost always get more consistent signal as opposed to Wi-Fi. Now let's go more in detail, uh, starting off with that docking station or hub. Uh, this is where everything plugs into and it's typically necessary because most laptops don't have enough ports to plug in their required hardware. But also, if you can get all this set up properly, then you only need to plug in one thing every time you need to connect your laptop. For example, for this station, I only need to connect this one USB-C cable in order to connect my laptop to all the other hardware. Now, please note that if you have a desktop machine like this one that has enough ports for the full station, then you can likely skip this section. For example, my desktop computer has two video ports for my two monitors and enough USB ports for all of my devices. Most people will be able to use a USB-C dock provided that they have a USB-C port on their computer. The USB-C port is now standard on nearly all new computers. Now, when considering docks, 
the number one thing to do is determine what ports you have and what ports you need, which depends on the hardware that you need to plug in. Many people will need at least four USB ports for their mouse, keyboard, webcam, and headset. And some people may also require another port for their printer. Most people will also need at least two video ports for their dual monitors. And now power can get a bit more complicated. Uh, this is the most difficult option to check off, so I consider it optional. Uh, although I was able to get it working with this current station. Now, some USB-C docks have the ability to give power to the laptop. Uh, if that is the case, then the docking station will likely need to be able to give as much or more power than the connected laptop requires to run. And you can usually find that information on the laptop and then also for the docking station and whatever sales material or specifications uh, they have when purchasing the docking station. Now, worst case scenario, if the dock does not provide power to your laptop, then you'll just need to continue to use your laptop's normal power supply. So you don't necessarily need to connect everything to your docking station. Uh, if necessary, you can also plug some things into your docking station or hub and then other things directly into your computer. However, there are some reasons why we try not to do this. Uh, so number one is that it's just not as efficient to need to plug in a whole bunch of things every time you want to move your laptop to your computer station. It takes a lot of time to plug in multiple devices. Uh, but then along with that time is also the fact that sometimes things don't connect properly and you need to start doing things like rebooting your laptop and so on. And then there's also this issue of just constantly removing and inserting devices uh, causing wear and tear, uh, which can eventually break ports and cables, which obviously can be an issue, especially if the port is in your laptop or your desktop. So now moving on to the display monitors. Um, oddly enough, monitors are often the most difficult part about setting up a computer station. Now, we could actually do an entire video on monitors, but there are really three things that most people consider critically important. Uh, one is that the screens are large enough. Two is that you can match your monitor's video ports between your docking station or computer. Three is having adjustable monitors that go up and down, and this is somewhat more of an ergonomic thing. So let's start off with number one. Uh, how large do your monitors need to be? Um, I personally prefer that my monitors are at least 23 inches. Here are some factors to consider when determining size. Number one is how much space you have at your desk because two 23 inch monitors take up about 40 two inches of linear feet, which is about three and a half feet. The next thing to consider is what type of work you will be doing. So if you'll constantly be opening up large spreadsheets or you're constantly opening up multiple documents so you can read one document, copy and paste things, and sometimes you'll do this three times over with three different sources, then you typically want more screen real estate so you can see as many windows and as many spreadsheet columns as possible. Now, moving on to number two, which is matching monitors ports between your monitor and the docking station or laptop. Uh, Basically, there are six ports that can be used to connect a video to your monitors. There's HDMI, DisplayPort, VGA, which is a little bit older, and DVI, which is a little bit older. Uh, we don't see those quite as often, but they do still show up. Uh, USB-C, which is now newer and showing up all over the place. And then USB-A, which is more of a workaround, like you would need a special adapter to get uh, your video to work through USB-A typically. Now, don't let these terms scare you. You basically just need to match the shapes that I have here. Uh, so feel free to take a screenshot. Now at face value, matching ports is really easy if your computer and your dock ports match directly with your monitor ports. However, all of the ports matched perfectly with the station that I showed in the beginning. And that's because we actually bought that docking station and had the video ports intentionally match the ports in our monitors. However, the issue is that if you don't have any spare ports that match, then you will need to purchase adapters. Now, this is pretty easy. Uh, for example, here I have a display port on my docking station and an HDMI port on my monitor. So if I were to go to my favorite shopping site, type display port to HDMI adapter, then bam, there, there's a solution for $8. Uh, and most solutions can be found for under $30. And it's worth noting that I still need an HDMI cable with this adapter solution. And you can see how it fits here. 
Now, monitors have many, many more options, so please let me know if you want a separate video on them. The next component worth mentioning is the audio or the microphone device. Uh, this is one of the most important efficiency items because voice quality is king when it comes to talking in meetings. The built-in laptop microphones are definitely useful, but they are typically low quality and they are typically so far away that they have the tendency to pick up more unwanted background noise. Headsets or earbuds with a built-in microphone will usually give you the best voice quality because the microphone is so close to your mouth that they're programmed to be less sensitive, which means that they pick up less background noise. Um, I'm personally a fan of the Microsoft LifeChat LX3000. Uh, they give decent sound quality and they're cheap at about $33 so they can just be replaced if they break. One note about audio devices is that I personally prefer wired devices as opposed to wireless devices, which require batteries. For example, if I'm going to be attending eight hours of meetings in a day, then my battery will likely run out and I'll be stuck in a situation where I'll need to find an alternative and that could happen in the middle of a meeting. My wired devices don't have this issue and they offer me just more reliable connectivity even though I need to deal with a little bit of a pain of having a, a cable flapping around. There are many different audio options available. Uh, this is just the simplest and the most compatible option. Uh, probably one of the most popular options right now are those Bluetooth headsets and those Bluetooth earbuds that a lot of people use. And those are definitely acceptable solutions. And now to move on to cameras. Most laptops have built-in cameras, uh, but they typically have poor quality. And the biggest issue is that the position is fixed to the position of the laptop. And here's why that's an issue. Typically the rule with cameras is that you should be facing the camera directly so that it looks like you're looking at the person. In other words, you don't want someone to be talking to the side of your face as you stare off into the abyss. In this case, most people will want an external USB webcam, which allows them to position the camera in the most optimal locations. Typically the location is on the monitor where they're displaying the meeting. So they're looking at the monitor with the meeting at everyone else, at all the other attendees, and that camera is facing them directly. Now moving on to some of the other peripherals. Uh, keyboard, nearly everything will work for this. Um, I've always used a cheap keyboard. There are other keyboards with special features like special buttons for hotkeys, wireless capabilities, etc. There are also a lot of people who require ergonomic keyboards for health issues. Basically just use what makes you comfortable. Now for mice, once again, nearly anything will work for this and I've always used cheap mice. They do have ergonomic mice for people who have health issues. I know that there are all sorts of fancy looking mice with bright lights that look like rocket ships, uh, but in the end, anything will work and just use whatever's comfortable. Now for your desk, uh, from the computer hardware perspective, make certain that your desk is large enough for two monitors and potentially a laptop. The monitors will likely take up at least 42 inches. Also make certain that you are in an area where you can get to at least one power outlet and where you can get a solid wireless signal from your router or where you can connect to your router via ethernet cable if you really want to go in that route. And of course, the major benefit of connecting with ethernet cable is it almost always gives faster internet speed and also more consistent signal quality, which is great if you spend a lot of time on the phone. There are also stand-up desks and stand-up desk converters, which you can see here. One note about these is that you need to make certain that your cables are long enough to reach the max height of your stand-up desk. Otherwise, your cables will get pulled out and could potentially damage your connected hardware. Uh, it'll do things like bend your cables, but also bend the ports within your computer and your docking station. Also, just consider where you're gonna put your keyboard and mouse. There are some positions that are far better than others, especially when considering ergonomic scenarios. And the last thing I wanna to touch on is lighting. Uh, this is not the most important consideration, but if you will be on camera a lot and if appearance is important to your position, then you'll typically want lighting in front of your face so you don't look like you're telling a story at a campfire. I personally have one lamp on each side of my desk to give my face even lighting. Uh, and you can also find little ring lights that clip onto your monitor. I think one of the worst case scenarios in this case is, uh, is the overhead lighting directly above you uh, because it'll create shadows on your face. So I really hope that you all found value in this video. Please let me know in the comments if there are any topics that you'd like to take a deeper dive into. Best of luck to y'all and have a good one.